Welcome back to the channel. If you're new to the channel, then welcome to the channel. In this episode, we have this Yamaha Pacifica Shape ERG 121. I picked this up at a car boot sale a couple of weeks ago for 15 quid. It's got a few problems, some screws missing in the pickup, uh, screws and springs missing in the, one of those saddles there. It's got a few dings and bashes, very scratched up. Somebody's wrapped tape around it at some point to hold the pickup in. Which is genius. Uh, a couple of loose uh, tuners. The neck's actually in really nice condition. There's hardly any fret wear or anything like that. So basically, this is a flipper. So I'm going to do this up, fix it, fix the problems, give it a good old clean up and stuff, set up new strings, and uh, just put it back up on marketplace. Maybe for I'm going to try my luck at 70 quid, um, but I'm expecting about anything between 50, 60 quid, something like that. But I'll try my luck at 70 and see how we go. Um, so, uh, first job is obviously remove those horrible, nasty st strings that were on there. Um, this thing is grabby. It has been neglected. There should be a law against this kind of thing. Um, there should be a helpline for guitars or something, you know, abuse, abuse helpline, guitar abuse helpline. I don't know why people abuse their instruments like this. Uh, these guitars are actually quite nice as well. For an entry-level guitar, they're not bad. Um, instruments. I've I've gigged Yamaha Pacificas and very nice guitars indeed. Good sound, play well, everything you want really. Um, anyway, uh, there's also a spring missing in the trem <laughs> cavity as well. So why? Where's that gone? Anyway, so um, this guitar with this guitar, I'm probably going to set it up with a floating trem. I never normally do that. I normally pin trems back, but um, I do have an arm. Uh, which is knocking around, and I don't normally use trems, but I'm going to set this up with a, a trem, a working trem, um, as well. So I'm just using some normal household furniture surface cleaner uh, just to get the grime off of there first before I do anything. Um, I'm touching this thing, and I'm like, oh, my fingers are getting sticky. It's just disgusting, um, and it's just oh, it's horrid. <laughs> just scraping it off. It's just ugh. I don't know where this thing has been. Uh, but at the car boot sale, uh, it was literally on the floor. Uh, the guy just had it on the floor. He had it up for £25, I think. I sent the wife in, which is always a good idea. Uh, she went in at 10 and he went, mm, 15 Okay, it was that, that's fine. Um, so, uh, yeah, just cleaning it all up, basically. And uh, you can see where that tape... Somebody's wrapped tape around to hold that pickup in, <laughs> which is great. Um, so I whipped the pickups out. Um, just to see what they are and, and to get, you know, to clean it better. Um, yeah, but it's left a, like a glue residue um, around that body there, which is quite nasty. Um, so I'm just whipping all the pickups out. Um, they're not, you know, it's an entry level guitar, so they're not the, the best uh, pickups, obviously. Uh, but, but they do, they sound alright, actually. Um, the middle pickup, the single core pickup, is pretty naff, but um, I never use those anyway. But I mean, you know, it is what it is. Um, so just getting all that sticky, sticky goo off there is like sticky, horrible goo. Um, a bit of an ingenious idea, I suppose, to wrap tape around the whole thing. <laughs> it's just a couple of screws and springs. I don't know. I don't know what's up with people, um, which you can get anywhere. Uh, you could probably go down to your local guitar shop and they'd probably have spares you know, in a drawer, like I do. Um, I have tons of them. Anyway, so I, I went ahead with a bit of teacup first um, to try and get that glue off and also some of the scratches out, you know, just give it a polish up. Um, it was it was kind of moving it, but um, a little bit stubborn. So um, after after a bit of this, I decided to try a bit of rubbing compound, which is a bit harder. Um, it's a harsher um, thing to use, I suppose. I don't know how the words escape me today. Um and uh, then I had to uh, use uh, a very, very sharp chisel um, just to get the worst of it off. But, I mean, the tea cut did get some of it off, so it's a little little tip for you if you're trying to get like anything sticky off of anything, really. Tea cut works really well, and tea cut does obviously remove uh, minor surface scratches. But it's, you can see, like, there's a, a glob, and it's even worse on the other side. I don't know how long the tape's been on. If you leave tape on something for a long time, it does that. So I use this uh, rubbing compound, um, which I use when I spray guitars. I was actually considering spraying this guitar, um, but then that's a whole lot more work, and for what it's worth, it's probably not worth my time or the, the expense in paint and lacquer and stuff. So um, we're just going to clean it up the best we can. It will make a good instrument for someone that's uh, wanting to learn guitar, 
um, or something as a spare just to throw around or whatever. You know, it's, it will get it playing good and sounding good. Um, the body's not in the best shape, but the neck's quite nice. Um, so there I am with the sharp chisel, really, really sharp chisel, just very carefully just scraping the worst of that off and on the other side as well and then use the rubbing compound and then the tea cut or everywhere and just polish the whole thing up and um, it's, it's amazing the difference doing this the difference this makes doing this to uh, to guitars you get I get guitars in all the time and they they look terrible and they smell bad as well which is even worse and then just with a bit of this this you know half an hour everything just cleans up lovely and it just makes a whole world of difference um, so moving on to the neck uh, the neck's actually not in bad shape. They're, they're quite uh, they're jumbo frets, I think, or medium jumbo frets at least. Um, lots of grime in there. It's like oh god. So again, it's just a case of cleaning these up. There's hardly any fret wear on them. Um, so the, the condition the body's in <laughs> and the condition the neck's in is just kind of like well, it hasn't been played all that much. Um, it's just been abused, um, which is a real shame feel sorry for it um, anyway so surface cleaner just get all the all the crap off and then um, with the tea cut again like I do in all my videos I love tea cut it's brilliant uh, just go across and polish all those frets up it takes literally minutes to do and it makes all the difference in the world gets all the crap off and makes it smoother to play when you, and, and it looks nice because they come up all nice and shiny and look brand new like that so do all that and then a bit of lemon oil just to condition the neck don't need a lot that that tub of lemon oil is I've had that for about four years um, you just don't need a lot just a few dabs and then just rub it in leave it on there. it's a great great thing to put on your your fretboards to condition the wood um, a lot of new guitars you get in come with dry fretboards so this is a this is a good thing to do it's very inexpensive in, inexpensive why are words hard today um, so there you go and it was a bit of that really and that's really all there is to it um, the difference already I've spent about an hour on this at this point and it's looking great um, and then onto the trim it's a very cheap cheap trim so I just took everything apart uh, again surface cleaner just rub it up rub it up dub get the grime off and did the same with the saddles and all that kind of stuff um, and then just make sure that it's all uh, all nice and tight make sure that blocks nice and tight on there um, it's only a thin trim block but um, you know functional these these trims are functional I've got loads of these in the drawer um, so yeah just make sure those screws there sometimes that block can come loose so I always make sure that's tight which it was that's fine and just spray a bit on there on the old saddles there I've got some like they're like fender copy copies saddles um, so that goes back in and then the springs, um, obviously I need to uh, add a spring, but I've got some spares, I've always got spares. So, and there's the trim arm I was on about, I've had this knocking around for ages. Uh, just make sure it fits, so it does fit, so we can um, set it up with a trim. So I'm going to do that, I'm going to add that, because uh, it's just sat in the drawer, I don't use it, I don't use it on any of my guitars. Um, so yeah, gets rid of it. Um, hasn't cost me anything, so the, the the cost of this so far has been sixteen pounds with the strings I'm going to put on it. Yeah, I've used a few resources, you know, some polish, some lemon oil, some cleaner, but you know, it's all negligible. Um, so even if I get fifty quid for this guitar, you know, it's it's a it's a decent amount of profit for a couple of hours work. Um, I'm don't, I'm not bothered about that, um, but we'll try our luck at seventy. See see what happens. Um, if you wanted to make maximum profit out of doing this kind of thing, um, you're better off selling it all separately. So sell the neck separate and the body separate and the tuner separate and the trim separate and the pickup separate. I've done that before and you do make more money that way, um, but it is a lot of hassle. Um, so this, in this case, on this occasion, I'm just going to let it go as a whole guitar. Um, I may even put it as a package with a, with a Vox that I'm selling. I've got an amp that I'm getting rid of. Um, which I don't use anymore, which I want to reinvest that money into something else, which I will use. Um, so I might put this together with that, um, just to try and sweeten the deal, you know, trying to make it more attractive to someone. Uh, so then it's like a whole package, a guitar and an amp, blah, blah, blah. Anyway, so onto the tuners, and the tuners are these this style of tuner, which is, they're pretty cheap, but they, they, they're functional again, they do, do the job. There's a couple of loose ones, the toppy... 
and the bottom knee are really loose so just whop them off I mean I could replace the tuners again I've got loads of them knocking around but you know if we can just get these to work it's fine so it's just a case of taking the uh, covers off and tightening up the uh, the screw there that's it really that makes a bit of difference and they're uh, a lot tighter they're all good and give them a good old clean up so there's the Harley Benton value strings 9 gauge £1.5 a set brilliant I buy them in bulks of 10 to get them for that and there it is all done and set up and looking a lot better than it did <laughs> when I picked it up off the floor of the car boot sale Anyway, so let's uh, head on to the studio and have a good old spankaroony. Yeah, and there you have it, folks. Let's have a look at the specs. It is a Yamaha uh, Pacifica design. The body is made of agathis. Uh, it's got a maple neck as uh, bolt-on. The fretboard is Sonokling. 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 Something else I've never heard of. Uh, pardon me. It's a hardwood fretboard then. Looks like rosewood, but not. 
Uh, the fretboard radius is 13.8 in inches. Scale length is 648 millimeters. Number of frets is 22. Dot inlays, nut width is 43, pretty standard. Pickup is humbucker, single humbucker. Uh, the, the Yamaha own pickups. Um, five way selector switch. One volume, one tone. Hardware is chrome. And that's it, really. High gloss, black finish. They retail at about £167 is the site I'm on at the moment, which is... Uh, what site is this? That is... Uh, where am I? I'm on DV247 Multi Music Store. DV247 Music Store. Words are hard today. Um, but they vary 150 to 170 brand new so i reckon yeah could be uh 70 quid would be fair um the pickups are n the neck pickup is gorge really like that the middle pickup that's where it goes downhill and the bridge pickup is really thin and tinny. Um, but I do like the neck. I like that a lot. It stays in tune pretty well. It plays really nice. You can get some good old uh, speed on the thing if you want to. It's nice and light as well, which I really like. Um, there's not much else to say about it, really. An excellent entry-level guitar. If I had a guitar like this to learn on, I would have been in heaven, to be fair. Uh, back in the day, so these are really nice. I do like the P the Pacifica design um, as well. Everything is great. <laughs> Love it. So this will be up for sale as of today for seventy quid. Um, so there's not much more left to say except don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe if you like this kind of stuff. Uh, don't forget to join us on Thursday evenings at seven p.m. for Hutch Club. Hutch Club Songwriting Sessions is back. Uh, this will be stream number four. We, we took a, like a year break, uh, but we're back writing some new songs. We have four songs already. We're going to do a new one as a group collab. It's really cool. It's really fun. Um, and don't forget to join the Discord where you can keep up to date with all that stuff. And uh, what else is there? Buy some merch. Where is it? There? Is it there? Or there? I can't know. I can't see. Uh, buy some merch. Help me out. Um, links are in the description. Uh, that's about it, really. Peace till next time. Cue the jingle. One, two, three, four. If you like my YouTube show, hit like and comment and get involved. If you dig my vibe, then hit subscribe and never miss an episode of my YouTube show. Till next time.